You're listening to the Smaller Supercharged podcast with Rhea Freeman, episode 218. Well, hello there, small and superchargers. We are having a solo episode today with me. I know over summer it's been a little bit out of order, but we are back with bells on and we're going back to our alternating format. So today we have got a podcast, just me and you hanging out together. um, And then we're going back to our interview solo interview solo. So I hope all is good with you. I hope you've had a good summer. Um, I hope you have managed to battle the juggle, but we're not talking about that today. And um, we're going to talk about doom and gloom, but don't don't turn off because you know I'm not here to depress you and talk about doom and gloom and all of the negative news in a way that is defeatist and is tapping into that negativity. I've been thinking hard about this because and all of the reports that we've had about increasing energy prices, I mean, I'm going to run a lot of jumpers, um, increasing costs for everything. We know that fuel costs have been crazy this summer. Um, they, are, they do seem to be coming down, though, I have to say. I've noticed some that are not as as high um, as they have been. But with all of this doom and gloom around and all the constant noise on online, on the news, in papers about it, it's really, really hard not to let that affect you. Um, That's not to say I don't think it's good to be aware of what is potentially going to happen. We've been looking at inflation and all those fun things. It's not to say just bury your head in the sand, but I'm here to hopefully provide a little bit of light at the end of the doom and gloom tunnel to just not quite reframe, but to suggest and try and encourage you to look at the situation and rather than kind of going limp and just going oh we're all screwed I'll just go along with it to look at it differently to look at it from the other side and to see what we can do to help you thrive or survive however anything that comes over the next few months so that's what we're talking about today so obviously, if you want to get a pen and paper, not when you're driving, that would be crazy. Go for it. Um, but obviously, this is free and you can listen whenever you like. I would say as well, we're going to be talking a bit about the importance of promotion and how you need to keep promoting what you do. And if you don't have any budget to do this, I would strongly recommend you buy my book. You knew I was going there, didn't you? It is called Small and Supercharge, Small Steps to Supercharge Your Brand on a Budget, although just between me and you, I did actually get the tagline wrong the other day in an interview, but we won't talk about that. Um, It's available on Amazon. It is available on Kindle as well. You can have it as a paperback or a Kindle and it is, well, I'm really proud of it. It's got really, really good reviews. Um, It's a bestseller. It was number one for a while. It's a, it's a really good blueprint to help you learn how to promote your brand for nothing literally if your budget is zero you can still do a really really good job of promoting your brand this book will help you so go on buy it um and if you have bought it already thank you um and also if you would consider leaving a review i would be hugely grateful if you leave a review i mean obviously a nice review um it really does help people decide the book is for them and i've had 15 fabulous people leave reviews well at the time of recording maybe more by the time this comes out but i'm really grateful for every single one of you so please do go and have a look and yeah i think it could really help so going back to our doom and gloom subject i don't want to call it that but i feel that it's the most apt and it's a tough one because it is hard i think it's been a really weird few years really weird obviously when coronavirus kicked off in 2020 and you know the well gosh we were in lockdown a lot of people a lot of small business particularly um, who were online saw an increase in spending and they had bumper years of course people who had physical shops the events industry was horribly hit restaurants were having a real truck really having issues because people couldn't physically get to them many pivoted and did things like takeaways but for a lot of people it was horrific but for many people it was actually really positive well not positive but but financially very good they had really really good years um it created a different way for them to run their businesses and perhaps proved that a physical location isn't always needed um, that there was other other ways to do business. So that was sort of 2020 kicked off like that with the, that enforced period of lockdown. 
and many people finding new ways to work, lots of people starting side hustles, to use an American term, but you know, businesses on the side of what they do with maybe the view to having them as their self-employed income or having another string to their bow. It could be that they did have their own business doing something that they could no longer do due to the restrictions and they thought, okay, what can I do? How can I use my skills or use my passions and make money? So lots of people either created businesses or did really, really well during the coronavirus lockdowns. I'll, there you go, I'll say it, it's, it's the truth. Of course, some people didn't, but it has been since then. It's been like a complete roller coaster. And obviously I, I work with lots of different people. I do speak to a lot of small businesses as well. And I do get a really interesting um, feel, I think, for what's going on. I mean, the small and supercharged group, the free one, do go over and join it. It's really interesting to to read people's experiences in there. Some people are having a you know really, really good profitable time. Some people are finding it trickier. Some people find different times of the year more challenging. Some people when we've gone into lockdowns or, you know, different, I mean, gosh, lockdowns reduced, you know, all those different levels we had for some time. It has been like some roller coaster, whether you've been riding high, you're, you know, potentially waiting for it to plummet or whether you are slightly lower and you're waiting for climb to climb again. It's been challenging to judge it. And it's quite difficult when you look at like projections and goals, particularly financial um, or to do with sales for, for businesses. It's difficult to predict based on the last few years because it has been, they have been completely different extraordinary unusual years they haven't followed a usual pattern for how things grow and develop so it's been a really tricky one and I think the next few months will also be tricky but what I wanted to say is that it won't be tricky for everybody and I did a bit of research online about businesses that do really well in recessions because while some businesses don't do well in recessions th- some absolutely thrive and grow so again you can just look at this online if you want as well it's quite interesting I think because we do think oh gosh recession everything's getting smaller um, or everyone's struggling they aren't it's really important to remember that not everybody is in the same boat there's a phrase isn't there about being on the same sea but not in the same boat and it's the truth so from my research some businesses that do well in recessions things like essentials so a more essential kind of food and drink. Healthcare apparently does well. Um, treats like sweets and alcohol do well. I can understand that. Children's products, pet products, repairs and DIY, delivery, fitness even does particularly well. Um, and discounters. They were a few that were kind of a recurring thing. And actually, I did a bit more research then. Um, because there are a lot of uh, US websites that brought together kind of different categories of people that, uh, of businesses that do well during recessions. And I thought, you know, it'd be really good to look at some UK examples and see if, if that's, if, if it's, you know, mirrored across the board. So I had another little search online and there was a website called startuploans.co.uk and there were, there were quite a few businesses that actually started during recessions. Um, which I was quite surprised about. The ones that jumped out to me because I know of them were Wilco, Sage, the um, accountancy software. There were JD Sports, Poundland, Pets at Home, PC World, Grays, G- uh, Pure Gym and Sipsmith. Now, do check this. This is what I read online. Um, so I, th- I believe it's accurate from my research. It was accurate, but don't quote me on this. But it was interesting, I thought, because when I went back to the first list, I could see that it was very much in alignment. Um, you know, uh, Pets at Home is a shop that, well, I, I use quite a lot. Um, Indy likes it in there. She particularly likes all the snacks and treats and that everybody loves her. Um, and she likes, well, you just she just appeared actually. She likes it in there. I wouldn't say it was particularly cheap. I think it's a nice shop. I think it's very well done. And actually, when I was at the Beta Business event, um, when was that? In March, we had somebody there speaking who used to work at Pets at Home. And he was talking about the experience. It was really cool, actually. You can go and listen to that. I think I think that's still available to listen to. But anyway, I digress. So the point of this is that not everybody 
suffers during a recession in terms of not everybody's businesses shrink. Some businesses grow and there is evidence of that. Do have a look online if you think I'm talking rubbish. Look at do what businesses do well in recessions, what businesses thrive in recessions, and you will see there is actually quite a lot of information out there. You know, there's recession-proof businesses. Um, I'm not quite sure that's the that's correct... T- well, I'm not quite sure um, that is what I would say because that makes me think it's, you know, you're, you're completely unshakable. But... There are loads of different examples, so don't take my word for it, particularly if you're feeling a bit down about it all. Do go and have a look. So I wanted to just give you some different ways of thinking about it and hopefully some tips that are going to really, really help you moving forward because it does feel heavy at the moment. The whole environment feels heavy and I think that as we move through more into autumn, winter, um, I think it's going to feel worse. And, you know, realistically, I think that's when we're going to see the energy rises and things like that, because at the moment, you know, I don't have the heating on because that would be mad. I mean, gosh, we've seen the high, incredibly high temperatures. So but hopefully these will help you. So the first thing I want to say, and if this was a written document, I would probably put this in bold and capital letters and I'd underline it, which is don't stop promoting. Do not stop promoting what you do because the best way to hurt your business and to stop people buying is to stop telling them that you exist. If they don't know you are still trading, what you make, what you do because you've just gone deadly quiet, the chances of you selling are greatly reduced and it becomes this self-fulfilling prophecy oh there's no customers there no one's buying so I'm not promoting you know think about if you find someone's Instagram account and they haven't posted for a year do you instantly think they're definitely still in business because I don't if you go to their website and it's not updated it doesn't really work or function do you think that that means they're still trading again I don't Make sure you carry on promoting whatever business you are in. It is so important that you keep telling people that you exist, what you do, how you can help them and what value you can bring. Because like we were saying, some businesses do particularly well during recessions. Some people are unaffected by recession due to their financial situation or whatever. Maybe they are affected. Maybe that's the wrong term, but they're not affected like other people are. So by you saying, well, I'm not going to talk about what I do because people can't afford it. That is a sweeping generalization, which is not going to help you. And it's actually not going to help your customer either. It might be that people aren't spending on specific things, but does that mean they're not going to spend on what you sell? Does it mean they still don't need to buy birthday presents, Christmas presents, treats for themselves, treats for their horse, products for their horses, products for their pets, products for their children or themselves. Well, no, it doesn't. It might mean that people are more careful. It might mean that these are more considered purchases. It might mean that people are looking at, you know, the kind of cost per wear and different things as well, which we're going to get onto. But it doesn't mean that because, and even if it's because you're struggling, That doesn't mean everybody is, but the way to make your situation worse is not promoting what you do. So please take that in because when you stop promoting, you make it harder for people to buy from you. You make it so much more difficult for them to find you and for them to believe in you and believe that you exist. So don't do that to yourself. It is a, you are making it so it's going to happen. I'm not saying that things aren't going to get more challenging over the next few months. I'm not saying that at all. But even if in the best of times you just stop promoting yourself and you act like you don't exist anymore, you will eventually see sales drop off. Even if you've got a really, really good flourishing business, if you stop updating your social media, sending newsletters, updating your website, communicating with your customers, there will be a time when there's someone else doing a better job that people will go to because they're more in their faces, okay? Don't do this to yourself. You don't need to. You don't need to. It might be that you think about the language that you use so that sits better with you, but 
don't do it to yourself. It's not a good call. So that's the, that's like, that's the main, if you take one thing away from this podcast, that's it. So again, even if this was a, if this was a written document, I might even circle that, put in a different colour, highlight it. So important. But also moving forward, I think there's some other things that it's just worth thinking about. So the first one is to sort of, I want to say be canny. That sounds more manipulative than I meant it to, but I've written be canny on my notes. When we said about thinking about the language that we use, thinking about the, the the way we present things, thinking about what kind of offers or deals or those kind of things that we do, that's a good thing to do. Think about, am I tapping into the current feel for things? Am I providing people with an option? What am I doing with my with the way I'm presenting this that's going to help people understand why my product or service fulfills a need for them. It's not saying we're going to encourage people to get into debt, but it, you know, people still need to buy all sorts of things in their lives. So how can you present what you do correctly, but in a way that also taps into that? So analyse that language, think about what you do, think about how you're saying things and provide people with solutions. That's a really good way of looking at it. I'd also think about kind of calculated risks and, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not a financial person. We know this. Um, we know we know this. But, you know, it, 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 I would, I was chatting, I was actually chatting to someone today about it. And I think that if you are looking for kind of opportunities, I think that's really great. I think recessions and changes and the change we have the last two years can be a great impetus to look at other opportunities, to look at how things work, to look at what you can do differently, what you can maybe add to or take away from your collection, where the trends are going. I would say I would take calculated risks, but then to be fair, I always would because I am not a, a crazy risk taker. Um, I love to experiment with things, but they're always on the more cautious end. But you know, you do you. I think what I'm trying to say really is that don't let you know the, the doom and gloom forecasts make you just stop trying anything I think there's still scope if you make sure you can afford to lose and all these things that I'm not you know I'm not this is not financial advice or business advice it's just saying is you know don't sometimes I think we wait for like the perfect opportunity and sometimes there isn't but there might be ways that you can do what you want to do but in a much safer or even on like a lower level to just introduce something slowly so that would be, I guess, what I'd, I would say, because we don't know how long this is going to last. We don't know the impact it's going to have. But particularly if it's something that you think can massively improve what you're doing or improve your offering or tap into what's available now, then I think that that, that should be considered at the very least. Even if you just work through the numbers and decide it's not for you, I think it should be considered. The next point here is about the potential to start a side hustle. Um, this was something that we saw a lot of during coronavirus when the lockdowns were happening. So if you are maybe employed and you think, you know what, I could do with some extra money um, because you know horses are expensive or cars are expensive or whatever you're into is expensive. It might be an opportunity to look at the current landscape, think about what's missing and potentially you know, whether you've got services to offer, which obviously a very, very low startup cost, or whether you have got products that you could offer, or maybe a, a passion, a hobby that you love that you could make into a, um, a business, that might be a good idea too. My next point is probably actually connected to the risk idea, probably should have done that, is that I think it's still good to look at new opportunities, new ideas. And I kind of like to do a bit of a, a cycle on things. So I think about what I wanted to do. I have a test idea. I find a way to test it at a low level. That could be something as simple as a poll or a Q&A or something like that on a social media platform or sending out to your mailing list, for example, and saying, I'm thinking of doing this. What do you think? Give me your honest feedback. Review that feedback and then if you want to take action on that feedback. So you've, you know, there are ways you can do things. Don't be afraid to reach out to your 
subscribers, your fans, your followers. I think family can sometimes be slightly misleading because they can be very, very excitable and supportive, which is lovely and we love them for it so much. But if they're not your target audience, they can sometimes give slightly misleading feedback. So that would be another thing. And the last point really is your sort of mindset on it really. Um, I know I've done podcasts before about sort of looking after your own mind online a bit, but it, it probably, you know, there are people who are going to find the next few months really, really challenging. And there are people who are going to find it, you're not going to notice any difference in the content they put out there or the way they speak or the way they act or what they do. That's fine. That's how they are managing the situation. And we need to respect that. However, I would really put some time into thinking about who you follow, who you get um, newsletters from, who you receive information from, and thinking, is this going to help me or not? It's really easy to unsubscribe from newsletters. Really easy. It's very easy to unfollow, mute, snooze, whatever people that just aren't really working for you. And this might not be their fault. It could well just be that you're not in that place. So do anything that you can to, I, I would anyway, I will, I do, um, remove that negativity. It might also mean that you don't look at the news so much, you don't look at newspapers, it's like doom scrolling, isn't it, I think it's called. Um, it might be that you look to, uh, for really in, like really good sources of inspiration, so there's some really great podcasts to listen to. This one, Well Done You, is a great example. Um, but there are loads of really good ones out there. I love um, Diary of a CEO with Stephen Bartlett. Those stories are so inspiring, so inspiring, so interesting. I love Holly Tucker's Conversations of Inspiration. What else have I got on my phone? Um, they're the ones that I listen to. Oh, Jenna Kutcher's Gold Digger, Jasmine Star. Love Jasmine Star. Well, I'm now on the Amazon app. Hold tight. And um, Amy Porterfield, of course. Yeah, the Jasmine Star show. I'm just looking at my subscriptions on here. <clears throat> Online marketing made easy. Um, yeah. And this one, did I mention this one? Also, if you are in the mastermind group, you do get access to the free mastermind podcast with all the trainings on in audio format. But that's obviously if you are a member of mastermind. So look to think, okay, how can you look after yourself? Because it is, you're going to need to get your brain on side for this. It might be that you, you speak about having a you know, mindset training or mindset coaching. Um, but there are loads of free resources as well. There's some really great podcasts out there. Um, I've actually, I need to, I need to subscribe to that as well. Well remembered. I've been, I've read the, um, high performance book. Um, and I know there's a podcast that goes with it, which I need to subscribe to because I find that really interesting and really inspiring. So sources of inspiration, sources of motivation, seek those out and do what you can to limit the other stuff. And that's not me saying, don't be a realist. It's saying, we know how it gets, we've been here before, and that isn't going to help you. So look for stuff that helps support you in the most positive mindset you can be in and seek that out because it's going to help you with every aspect of what you do. Also, even just simple things like making time for your friends, for getting outside, for having a cup of tea, for going for a walk, all things that are free or very, very cheap. I don't know. I mean, I think tea, well, my tea is very cheap, but those things, there are loads of things that you can do to help. You know, I know we're, we're, we're working hard and we're, you know, hustling and we're grinding. I don't know. We're doing all the things. We're working really hard. And particularly when things get, get tight and stressful, we think we need to do more of it. And in some ways, yeah, we absolutely do. This isn't an excuse to say you don't have to work. But there is also that balance between what is good for you. And sometimes we can be a lot more productive if we take that time out to go for a walk, to go and have a chat and a laugh with a friend. It can do huge things to us on lots of different levels that make us a lot more productive to see things differently. If we find people to buddy up with who are, are positive and inspirational people to follow and um, who you can have a cup of tea with or you can go for a walk with, or you can even have a Zoom chat with. There's no limit to it, but find these people because they will help you. Thank you so, so much for listening today. I really appreciate it as always. Um, as I said, the book, the book is good. Go and have a look at the book, Small and Supercharged, small, way, small Steps to Supercharge Your Brand on a Budget. The other thing I would say as well, and I haven't been paid to say this, but I'm here. So if you are an equestrian business, do make sure you check out Beta International. Um, it is fast approaching from the 11th to the 13th of September. 
it is great it is free to come along if you are if you meet the criteria and it's up at Stonely I will be there all three days I'm speaking all three days actually there are there's a really great seminar schedule so when we're thinking about you know free inspiring things this is a great place to go lots of brands there um, a new products gallery all sorts going on so do check out that yeah do check out that event the website is beta-int.com and it is absolutely free to visit you do need to register for the show beforehand you can't just turn up but do go and have a look if you are in the equestrian trade you are not going to want to miss that and it's a great source of inspiration and so much more thank you for listening don't forget the book and i'll see you really soon